You have come across this message today and I want you to believe that God bring you to this channel today to listen to his servant Apostle Jesus Shama. It is the desire of God that you become what he wants you to be. I want you to pay attention to every bit of word that God has for you through his through the mouth of his servant Apostle Jesus Shama. And the first spiritual law that governs wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender the law of absolute surrender hmm. the law of absolute surrender job chapter 22 please we'll start from verse 21 job chapter 22 it says acquaint now thyself with him not with it, not with them, not businesses, and be at peace. Thereby, good shall come to you. Next verse. It says, Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth, and lay up his words in your heart. He's teaching you how to prosper, and he's not mentioning any business. He's talking about the state of your heart. Down to 26, we're reading 26, 23 now. He says, if thou shalt return to the Almighty, ah, to prosper, I thought you didn't need God. Job is teaching us a principle here. If thou shalt return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacle. 24, then thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Because when you prosper, you will have enemies. And thou shalt have plenty of silver. For then shall thou have thy delight. What? In your wealth? Your delight will be in who? The Almighty. And shall lift up thy face unto God. That means even with the abundance, your face will still be stayed on Him. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. The law of absolute surrender. My son, I don't need your tithe yet. I don't need your offering yet. I don't need any of those things from you. Don't remove your shoe and drop anything here. The first thing and the ultimate thing I need is not your business idea. Leave your brain, leave everything. What I need is your heart. My son, I don't trust you if your heart is still in your possession. Give me your heart. I know what money can do to you. You know, a lot of people say, I'm humble, based on what parameter? Who would have known that a little shepherd boy one day would kill somebody? Can I be very honest with you? Until God vets the state of your heart and concludes, don't trust whatever you think your heart tells you. The Bible says the heart is deceptive above all things and desperately wicked. Who would have known that a young boy would ignore his mother who gave birth to him one day simply because he has now become rich? Who would have believed that a young boy one day can stand and actually go and kill a human being and turn him upside down and drain the blood into a pot because he wants to make money? Can I tell you, the heart of man is dangerous. Until God vets you, you are not ready to do business with him. Very honest truth. The law of absolute surrender. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5, speaking about the Macedonian church, it is true that Paul blessed them and all of that, but listen, it says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but they first gave of their own selves to the Lord. Can you see that there? The first thing they gave was their selves to the Lord and then unto us by the will of God before their substance. I submit to you by the authority of scripture that there are many people who are merely doing flesh driven transactions in church. Most of our givings are not potent because they come from a heart that is not surrendered to him. Just because you are dancing with offering, it doesn't matter whether it's offering, whether it's a goat, whether it's a bag of wood, it doesn't matter in what fashion it comes. If God does not have your heart, believe me, you are not ready to prosper God's way. The law of absolute surrender. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. 
I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I have prayed many times and even as I'm on this stage now, as, as a man of God, I am praying it. That if there is anything God gives me that I cannot give him back, my prayer request is that may it never come to me. Don't say amen for me, I'm praying to God. You pray your own prayer and, and, and tell God and say, Lord, if you are going to give me a car, a house, an estate, an oil well, doesn't matter what it is. If it would take your heart away from God, take away your sanity and make you too arrogant. Anything that makes your knees too far from the ground is dangerous for you. If you started the journey with him on your knees, even after 10 years as a billionaire, let him find you on your knees. Whatever you ask, this is the part that is not taught in church. This is the part that is not taught in business seminars. Christian people stand, I don't mean to be sarcastic, but people just begin to teach about money and they just swell the lust of people. You see a lot of people diving on cars because they want to claim it. Lie down on a car that you should be arrested. You lie down on somebody's car, telling lies, all this fake living is because people are not surrendered. People still borrow money, give narratives that are not there. I'm showing you the kingdom's way. With the dignity of kingdom integrity, you can give him everything. Everything. That estate belongs to you. That oil well belongs to you. That company belongs to you. And mean it from your heart. Can I tell you one thing I know about God? Anytime you tell God I give you anything, get ready. He must test you. There are things you tell God, you say, okay, I understand. But there are other things he says, I'm coming. What did you say is my own? Mention them. If you say Isaac is my own, I'm coming. Just because I left you in chapter 12 and the rest, I'm coming. When we get to chapter 22, I will tell you, take now thy son. Don't tell me he's the only one I know. Take him to a mountain. And offer him as a bond offering. The Bible says Abraham got up early in the morning. This was his future. Can I tell you? You can drop a billion naira and yet not be surrendered. So I'm not even talking of money. I'm talking of a state where if everything leaves you and Jesus still remains, you still believe that you are valuable. Absolute surrender. If we do not teach this in church, I am telling you we are going to produce a crop of millionaires that will shock the kingdom negatively. Most of the people we think are humble are not humble. They are humbled, not humble. Why do you stand and talk foolishly when you don't have anything to defend what you are saying? So you keep quiet and look wise. But in the presence of economic empowerment, that's when you see the revelation of... There are people today, if they make as little as 10 million or 5 million or 1 million, they will not listen to anybody again. Including a man of God. Everybody lift your hands and say, lift your hands for what? Um, I dropped. You, you see that kind of thing? There are many families where you can easily know when money has come and when money has gone. By the passion that is suddenly developed for devotions and prayer and all of this. You can know that there is trouble. There's one money that is hanging somewhere. And everybody now, a fast is declared. People start praying. When that money arrives, nobody even knows that it has arrived. Everybody just ignores God. No. What God is teaching us tonight is very powerful. And I, 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 I plead with the body of Christ, let us once again respect the place of surrender. More than tithing. You can bring tithe like a bribe from a carnal standpoint that just seeks to use God as a ladder and climb. You have wasted your money. That thing is donation. Can I tell you, the tray that carries your tithe is the purity of your heart not the what you are dropping here 
There are people who become wealthy people. You see, this is why I have profound respect for people who are wealthy in the kingdom and love Jesus Christ. Their heart and their, my regard and my respect for them has no bounds. There are people who will even go to Jesus like colleagues putting their hands in their pocket and say, I'm rich now. Come, talk to me. I need help. Answer me fast. I'm used to boys and orderlies around my life. Come and answer me. And Jesus says, this was not how you were. So what? I'm now blessed. Make up your mind and train everybody you know, yourself inclusive, to never be ashamed. Never be ashamed of surrendering everything to Him. It's true. When your heart belongs to Him, He can now trust you with anything and not be afraid. I was telling the school of ministry students that God is still looking for treasurers. His last official treasurer disappointed Him. He's still looking for people to manage his money for him. It's easy for us to insult Judas and criticize Judas. But can I tell you the truth? Anybody who can trust you with money, truly, truly, you were a trustworthy person. At least at the moment. Out of all the 12 disciples, it was only Judas. Don't just criticize Judas. Study him. It's not easy to hold that kind of money and still be your... Don't people steal money in church? Don't people steal money in offering baskets? Don't people steal money in weddings? Where they, they write blank check and people pocket it and God is watching? Can I tell you, having access to tremendous financial resources and still having your mind sane is profound stability. Profound stability. Next time you see a wealthy man who you know is wealthy by God and still has his mind, his sense of decorum, respect, discipline, sanity, don't just pray for that person. That person deserves your honor. Because I can tell you, this money thing has its own power. For Jesus to say you can choose only two options, either serve God or serve money. He didn't say serve Satan. Many people have disappointed God with this finance thing. God wants you to be exempted from that. There are many of us God has trusted with certain levels of things. You were loving God and worshipping Him. You were a worker in church. The moment you became wealthy. This was the foolishness of Solomon. He got to a point where he forgot the God of his father. When he now increased and he had many. Look at his confession in Ecclesiastes. He said, everything my eyes saw that I want, I got. What sort of a man is that? And he said, here is the conclusion of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is only a weariness to the soul. This is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commands. For this is the whole duty of man. Vanity upon vanity, he said. All is vanity. Are we together now? This spiritual law, absolute surrender. You can put your checkbook on the ground, put your ATM cards on the ground, put all the papers of your assets on the ground, and lie down above them and say, Father, you are exalted above it too. Above it too. And the devil says, Don't fall your hand. Don't forget that you are such a great man. And you say, No, I'm great because I'm able to lie down and worship. What was Satan looking for? Not money. He said, can you bow down and worship me? And I will give you this. If you can find my message, please go on our YouTube page, Koinonia Global. Follow my message, even as thy soul prospereth. Put them to practice and live by the word of the Lord. And live a faithful Christian life and prepare yourself for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom and remain blessed. Subscribe to this channel. God bless you.